tonight. Keep saying hallelujah for a minute. <laughs> the, the sound system says I'm cold today. So cold, heat, all those things begins to make the sound ministry have to work harder. Hallelujah. It's beautiful out, isn't it? If you got to hear a little earlier, it's now snowing. I don't think it's going to amount to anything, but it sure is pretty. Hallelujah. And that is what comes with winter, isn't it? Hallelujah. So we made it through Thanksgiving, and uh, on this beautiful Sunday, God sent confetti. Hallelujah. <laughs> to bless all of us. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it. Driving in, I said, if only the sun could come out and take those gray, gray clouds away. But I'm in the house of God this morning, and I have no gray clouds. How about you? The sun of righteousness, hallelujah. The sun of glory is alive in this house today. And I'm so happy that he's already here. I don't even have to invite him to come, he's here. So we're gonna raise our hands and we're gonna thank him for coming to this house of God today. Raise your hands at home this morning, welcome and welcome him into your home because I know he's there with you right now. He's a God that is everywhere. He's a God that when you call on his name, he's so faithful to come to you. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, we are so thankful that you have come, that you're willing to be in our presence today. Oh, we pray that we send up sweet aromas to you. I pray we put a smile on your face today. I pray you know that there's a people, hallelujah, that longs more than anything to be in your presence. Touch those homesick this morning, God. Before this broadcast is over, bring life to them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We rebuke the sickness this morning. We ask strength to come. We ask wisdom to come. Hallelujah, Jesus. Move this morning, we pray, on needs. We'll praise you and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name, hallelujah. Glory to God. Just want to tell the church this morning that the young girl that we prayed for, she has been returned home. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you, though, to keep her in prayer. She's at that age of decision. And I know she's got godly parents who love her with everything and every part of their being. So would you continue to pray for them, their family, that God will bring a peace and she'll make that total 100% decision to walk with God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Will you do that? Hallelujah. We cannot leave these things just to the fact that our children come to church. Every one of our children that are in this house of God, in any house of God, have to come to a decision-making place to leave the world behind and walk with Christ. So remember them in your prayers, would you? Hallelujah. But I'm so happy she's home. I got it, I think, I think it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, Sister Agnes had been in fervent prayer, so I emailed her. <laughs> I don't think she got it till the morning, but um, just excited that she's home. Hallelujah. So thank you for your prayers. How many is ready to worship God this morning? Before we do, and I know some people are being very careful, so you be careful too, but would you just turn around and find 10 people and just greet them this morning, virtual, handshake, whatever. Tell them how beautiful they are, how happy you are they're in the house of God this morning. Oh, just 
reach out and touch them and bless them today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you don't know them, find out their name. Hallelujah. Boy, Bobby, you are looking very handsome this morning. Wow. I don't even know if he heard me. Hey, Bobby, you're looking very handsome this morning. Yeah, you. Wow. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell them how good they look today. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. He's awesome today, isn't he? Hallelujah. God is moving in mighty ways. His wonders to perform. Hallelujah. Find another five people and just tell them how glad you are. Just yell to the back, whatever. Hallelujah. So happy you're in God's house today. Hallelujah. You ready, Brother Phil? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Anybody hallelujah. come to give him glory today? Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Come on, clap your hands. Thank you. 
Give him some glory this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Does Jesus deserve the glory for what has yes, happened in your he life? Does. Yes, he does. I'll answer that. Yes, he Hallelujah. does. Glory. <laughs> he's you, worthy. Jesus. He's worthy. He's Jesus. worthy. Hallelujah. You just sometimes you just got to take a moment and just tell him how great he is. Hallelujah. Not come to him asking him for anything, but just tell him how wonderful he is. Anybody feel like doing that this morning? Hallelujah. Mm, you deserve the glory and the honor. As I lift, hallelujah, Jesus. As we lift, you deserve the glory and, and the honor. As we lift our hands, Hallelujah. as we bless, sing that again, sing that again, you deserve, you, you deserve, deserve the glory. glory.
I will bless the Lord. Right now, just send some blessings up to him. Just how you like to have admiration given to you, will you give it to him this morning? Oh, I'll bless you, Lord, at all times. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. 
I will bless you, Lord. I will bless you. I will bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for trusting me with this gospel. Thank you, oh God, for calling me, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for counting me worthy to carry your cross, Jesus. Oh, I just want to bless you. I will bless the Lord. I just want to bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in his presence there's fullness of joy. So if you're in his presence this morning and there's something that's bearing down on your life that is not bringing you joy, just... Ask him to take it right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't waver in your faith. Don't think maybe or I'm not worthy just in his presence. Oh, he will bring you the fullness of joy. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Precious, precious Jesus. Precious Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I would just like to just stay oh, right here, just laying in the altars of God saturating us oh it's great to shout it's great to run but oh in the quiet place with almighty God shut away shut in Jesus oh he's walking in our midst hallelujah he's walking in your homes right now Oh, his gentleness is so powerful. And I will bless you, Lord. I will bless you, Lord. At all times, I will bless you, Lord. I will bless you, Lord. I will bless you, Lord. times he blesses us it's nice sometimes just to turn around and bless him isn't it I will bless the Lord hallelujah 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 wow 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 hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Hallelujah. If he didn't do anything else more for me today, just to be in his presence. Hallelujah. It's awesome this morning. Hallelujah. His peace is awesome today, isn't it? Hallelujah. Just turn around and look at your neighbor and just tell them, I really, really need you. And I really, really love you. Thank you for being my brother or my sister. Oh, just begin to share this love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wow, he's awesome. In this peace this morning, let's bless our country. 
Our country needs this peace, doesn't it? It certainly does. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This morning I ask you to please keep Brother Mike and Brother Ed Kirchhoff and their family in your prayers. Um, their mama went home this past week and a pretty, pretty amazing lady, 94 years old, um, still got up every morning and raised her blinds and uh, lived alone. And I believe you said she still drove, right, Brother Mike? Or no? Oh, she stopped driving almost a year ago. <laughs> 93, still driving. <laughs> so remember them this week, and uh, God will be, he has been faithful to them. And uh, just keep that family in your prayers. And Sister Pauline's mother-in-law passed away just before Thanksgiving. Please remember that family. Um, this is their second loss in just a few weeks. So please, please remember them. Then I know God will strengthen. He'll be with them. He's faithful that way, isn't he? Sister Cynthia Robbins' family had a death in their family. Remember them in prayer. And uh, there's something about the holidays that makes all those things a little worse, doesn't it? But I encourage you to not stop remembering, and I encourage you to not walk in defeat, but to walk in praise and thank God that you still have a memory. True? Hallelujah. That's what I have to do. So I'm not telling you anything that I have not had to do myself. <laughs> Hallelujah, he's just faithful today. This morning they're going to come back and sing to you, but before they do, um, you have noticed in your um, calendar for December that came out, the uh, Jubilee, Christmas Jubilee celebration. And um, in unbeknowns of what will, won't, won't happen, um, the music ministry and I decided it was better to tape. And as we were talking about it, uh, God dropped this um, into my heart concerning that night, which brought a peace to me. And what I'd like to ask you as a church to do is just as you would invite someone to come out to church on that night, I would like to ask you to invite someone to your home and have some fellowship with them. Enjoy the night together, put it on, share it with someone, and bring your families together. Don't have to put on a big spread. You could have dinner, and then all gather around sing the carols with the choirs and those that are apart. Our children are all taking part in it this year. Uh, different singing groups is in there. Our choir is in there. Our choir and music ministry alone, would you like your church to support this night? I know I would. And we have done it in the church before. And yes, we have a pretty good crowd, but they work, they've work. they been working for three months now um, to make this possible. So uh, in your homes, in your families, getting people to watch, encouraging them to do the same, do a watch party, get them on wherever they are if they don't feel safe or you don't feel safe having people in your home, whatever it is, but I'm going to encourage you this holiday season to be the Good Samaritan and to get out of your box. And this morning, uh, God has laid on my heart to talk to you a little bit about getting out of our box. And um, there are, is hurting people. There's people that need to know 
There's a Savior that has died for them. So if you could start planning, you've got a few weeks before that Sunday night rolls around. And uh, I just believe that God is going to do miraculous things in your home. One of the things that I want to really encourage you to begin to pray about is your fear that you can't do it, your fear that you need to have someone else come in that you think is greater than you. We all have a testimony, and we all can pray. And we don't need to preach sermons. Our lives will be the sermon enough. But if you will get confidence that God has called you to reach the lost, when you got saved, he didn't say it's going to be a matter of time before you're able to testify. If you got saved, you have a testimony. And I'll be honest with you. The world doesn't want your great revelation. Your, this world, your family, your friends just needs to know there's a Savior that loves them. And he came. We're entering into this holiday season. Good Friday kicked it off. Or not Good Friday. I wish we were at Good Friday. But uh, Black Friday, it caused people to spend money and it got us ready for the world's natural present giving. But God wants us to get ready for the present that he sent to us and that was Jesus Christ. See how easy it was for me to say that? And it's going to be just as easy for you. Stop fearing, start, stop looking at what you think will happen and just do it. Okay, will you pray about it? Pray and ask God, who do you want to be in our home this Christmas season, okay? And I know that God will richly bless you, and I'm going to encourage you also to get this thought out of your head that you uh, have to be extra, extra careful because of the church. That was put into you as a fear to keep you out of the house of God. But it doesn't stop you from going to other places and doing other things. And I find myself saying more and more, people are going to do what people want to do. So I'm asking you this Christmas season to do what God wants you to do and make that your priority and your holiday season will bring you tremendous fruit. And you'll be full of that peace on earth, goodwill towards men. And you will know that peace that he talked about the night he showed up. Guess nobody likes this message, huh, Brother Chris? You like it? Yeah, I can hear you, but I can't hear anybody else. We, we have to bring the love of God to people. This Christmas is going to be a hard one for many people because we've gotten so materialized. And the materials are not all going to be there, but there's a Savior that will be. He will. And we have him. So find another way to give. Find another way to bring joy to people's lives. And uh, God will richly, richly bless you. He will. As I talked about for Thanksgiving, I've been thinking about it um, concerning my dentist. And is Sister Laureen Luce here? Oh, she's not here this morning? Okay. I will reach out to her. Um, I met her in the grocery store, and because I wasn't at the office, I didn't have her number, but or she found me at the grocery store, and um, unfortunately, um, I was in line, and I knew she wanted to talk to me. She came up and gave me a back hug, and I was trying to get through the register. I had 15 minutes to get to South Windsor to my dentist who was staying over for me because my tooth fell out again, and it's going to stay out. So please pray for me, because they're going to have to go in and get the roots out. Um, but anyway, uh, we shall survive. 
and um, I had to go do things that older women need to do before they go out into the cold, and I was rushing like crazy, and there was a line behind me, and so when I left and I got done with the dentist and, and I'm driving home in my car, I'm like, oh my goodness, how rude was I? And even though I had every reason in the book, sometimes life makes us so busy that it's hard for us to accept the hug. But I remember her hug. I remember her smile. Um, I just couldn't respond at the moment. It's hard to do that when you're crossing your legs and you know you don't have time because you have to get somewhere. But he's faithful, isn't he? So this holiday season, no matter how busy you are and no matter what struggle you're going through, find time to love people. And uh, God will be faithful to us, okay? Just love him this morning. So I was thinking of that, and hopefully she was here, and I would have given her an open apology. And if you're watching from home, Laureen, I love you. Come find me, and I'll give you a better hug. Hallelujah. But um, he's good, isn't he? He's an awesome God. This morning they're going to come and sing. I don't know who's singing this morning. Is the choir? Worship team is going to sing this morning. And uh, so look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to get creative this Christmas season. I'm going to give the gift of Jesus. Doesn't cost you anything except your time, except your smile. <laughs> Hallelujah. You bless others, you'll be blessed. Good morning. Sorry you have to sing to this crowd that has like, I don't know if I like that idea. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. The King of Glory has come. Yes, he and has. And we can worship and we can rejoice. And the world will know. The Bible says that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But we can worship him now because we have had that revelation and we have him as our Savior. Preach it, so would you worship with us this morning? Praise preach the Lord. it, preach it. Yes, the world will bow down say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory. 
Well, this morning, I have some wonderful news for our church. Little Logan Michael Chokas showed up on Wednesday. <laughs> Hallelujah. He made his debut. <laughs> he was born 11-24-2021, and he weighed 8 pounds, 5 ounces. I know, and that little girl... And his length was 19.5 inches long. So needless to say, Kathleen is completely skinny again. <laughs> Mama and baby are doing well. Um, there was a little complication that occurred and they told her that she would have a long recovery. But Jesus walked in. And the nurses, the doctors could not believe what happened to this girl. And uh, she's not believing for a long recovery. And uh, they sent her home from the hospital doing really, really well. So uh, we're grateful today. And uh, the baby is, is doing good and he's absolutely adorable. And his name is Logan Michael Chokas. Hallelujah. That Michael I know is after his brother. And uh, Lori and Rich know that those two boys became great, great friends. And uh, my, Nick has always looked up to his brother Michael. So nice, nice to have a nice birth sake name, isn't it? Hallelujah. So I know the Curdies are happy. I know the Chokuses are happy. Hallelujah. So Nick got his boy. Hallelujah. This morning, um, uh, I think she took the baby to the bathroom. So Brother Ben, come on down here, because not everybody's on Facebook. And seeing 
He brought the dilemma of all of this to us. We'll have him come and answer the question we're all asking. So, will it be two boys, a boy and a girl, or two girls? It is two girls. Yes! <laughs> Keep me in prayer. I see Matt back there smiling. There's a reason. Ben, in the office a couple of weeks ago, I said to him, Ben, I think they're going to be boys. He goes, I don't. I said, why? He said, because I've teased Matt so long about his three girls. He said, I think I'm going to end up with three girls. <laughs> so if you come into church and you see Ben in a corner with Matt, you'll know he's asking for advice. <laughs> I don't, you know, girls are wonderful. I know we have mood swings, but we're the ones who usually cook for you, clean for you. Like, <laughs> what are you laughing at? So our church is going to get twin girls. So that's good. Hallelujah. I looked at Nicole the other day, and because she's carrying two, she's like doubling up on the time. And I looked at her walking down the aisle the other day, and I was like, oh, my Lord, she's already waddle. I mean, she was just like, <laughs> but I seen her this morning as we sang and worshiped God just spending time with those babies that's in her womb as she just soothed them and rocked them and brought that worship right into that womb hallelujah you can do that you know and uh, he's faithful he's really really faithful so good news, good news. Babies are always good news, aren't they? Yes, they are. Always good news. This morning, um, I want to just talk to the church. I titled my message, I had two titles, but I decided to title it, O Love of God. I went to bed last night on this, and I don't know if I preached it in my sleep or not. Sometimes I do. But when I woke up this morning and began to get ready for church, that old song came to me, O oh, love of God. The songwriter said, O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless, and how strong it shall forever more endure the saints and the angels song we have a new song that the angels have never heard because they've never come through the valleys and the rushing waters and the trials of life the Bible says they stand in awe of the songs that you and I will sing. Our songs of victory, our songs of overcoming, our songs of not being defeated but victorious. And even though they sing around the throne, they don't have the same song you and I have.
The songwriter in this song said these words, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. That love of God is so amazing. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and it reaches to the lowest hell. Those are quite amazing words that was penned and I didn't really have time to go in because it was this morning it came to me to find out why the author of this song wrote those powerful words. It's an old song, and most old songs were written because of what somebody's walk of life had obtained and the victory that was wrought. And I remember going through a battle a couple of weeks ago something that just really affected me greatly. And as I sat there, I began to repeat the words of a song that is one of my favorites, and it's one that means a lot to me. And when I found out why it was written, it made even more sense to me. And that is the song that says, Remember, I love you. And when you doubt that I do, count the tears scattered through my love letter to you. And I remember sitting there just, just needing to reach Jesus. And I said these words, I refuse to put my Bible on the shelf like the woman did who wrote the words, Remember I Love You. A year later, she picked up that word of God and began to read through it and found her way back to a Savior that didn't reject her. He was there all the time. Sometimes these old songs and these old things remind us of of what we need to still take a hold of and we still need to hang on to. So I'd like you to turn this morning in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 21. If you're new, that's almost to the back of your Bible, right around Revelation, because you'll find Revelation. Then go back a bit and you will find 1 John. Don't get confused between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Go all the way to the end of the New Testament and you will find it. It's tucked in there with all these little tiny chapters that are so powerful, don't you find? They're just so, so powerful. Little but mighty. Hallelujah. Didn't Jeff Beckman one time um, do that song, The Mighty uh, Something? And that was the night in the talent show that he was down here and he jumped and jumped up on the platform and we all went wild. <laughs> I'll never forget that night. Brother Jeff was on a roll. The Mighty Warriors or something. I don't know what the song was, but have you guys seen Jeff and Anna's baby? Oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. The only sad thing is he's going to get his mom and dad's sense of humor. <laughs> They're already putting that in him. <laughs> the main scripture that brought me to this message this morning is found in verse 19. And I will read it to you. We love him because he first loved us. I want to take you on this journey. We're, we're in the Christmas season. 
Um, it is time to remember. Uh, there's different holidays, different things that happens that causes us to just sit down a moment and to remember and to look at. And if you do it, it will definitely make you closer and draw you in as you look at the promises that came at this time of the year. I am not ashamed to tell you today that I detest the natural holiday seasons um, because it takes everything away from God and it actually brings a false hope. And in that false hope, if we're not careful, we will begin to doubt that Jesus will take care of us too. I found that in the predicament that our world has found us to be in and listening to them talk about a new strand and they don't know what it will do, how it will affect, blah, 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 True? And so they had this man on, and he said, it is going to come. But if we can take precautions, we will be able to maintain it. The end time is definitely about us. And there is an enemy that is very strong that wants to take the love of God away from us. It wants to take love away, period. It is filled with anger. It is filled with rage. It will lash out at any moment, and it doesn't care. And if we as Christians are not careful, we will begin to not love. And that would be the worst thing in the world. So at this holiday season, chapter 4, verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That's the hard thing about trying to distinguish exactly what to do and what not to do. And lots of times, maybe you didn't, but in the past reading this, I always thought of it as the church going, watching church services, hearing a false prophet, and that definitely is a part of this scripture. But those that are in authority, many of them have become false prophets. And I'm going to bring you to a place today that's going to help you to go back and discern between what is right and what isn't, what you should be cautious of and what you shouldn't be cautious of what you should have wisdom for and understanding and not fear that drives you to more fear. Is it scary? What do you think? Is it scary, church? What do you think? This is what I'm going to say to you this morning. God has visited us in a great way, but through this holiday season, I can tell that we all got into a holiday and we all have come to a place where this morning we really did not come here to worship God. Because we're tired, we went too much, whatever, but... You're kind of dead this morning. <laughs> Hate to tell you that, but you are. Did you, did you feel that this morning, Brother Phil, trying to lead song service? 
How about you backup singers? They can't see this. You got to speak. Yeah. And so when we came to God's house this morning, what did we come for? Because everyone that did platform ministry did exactly what you did all weekend. What made the difference? We go out and say, oh, the music ministry didn't have it this morning. Yeah, they did. They did. But what we have to do is say, I didn't have it this morning. And what took place that removed that? What is causing me to just like sit here and not hear what the word of God is even going to say this morning because I'm off in some other land? Beloved, believe not every spirit but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. It is, I think it's ironic that this morning, when I just begin to go over my notes and get a few, few little bit more, that I sat at the table and said to myself, I had as busy a week as everybody else. And somehow I knew this morning I was going to end up in the house of God with a church that was not going to participate. Because I said to myself, and I have never ever done this as long as I have been pastor. While everyone else is tired and frustrated, they're all expecting me to get a message. And I thought to myself, what if I showed up this morning and just said, I was too tired, too caught up in what I have to do, the trials of my natural life, the changing of plans that has to take place. None of you were on call through the holidays. But I was. I made calls on Thanksgiving Day. Did you? Someone can say, oh, pastor, you're just trying to brag. No, I'm a shepherd. But you are a sheep that should follow your shepherd. And when your life gets so caught up in something that when you come to the house of God... You expect someone else to bring you through. You must change. <laughs> you must change what you're doing. I noticed Sister Janet down here shouting and everything else, and yet through this holiday season, she moved. Pastor, what does this have to do with it? Well, do you believe that I'm your sister? Do you believe that I'm your friend? Do you believe that God is your heavenly father? I think I'm getting there, Brother Chris. I think, think so. Keep my back. Do you believe he's your savior? Yes. Do you believe he's your friend? Yes. So I guess in a way, this morning we're all doing to God what I did to Sister Lori. Because I'm too busy with life, God, to bring you praise. I'm too tired got too many appointments. Someone just preached on that. Sister Renee, making time for the things of God. 
So verse 1 says again, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Know it. We have to know it, church. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come. I want to say to you today that COVID, the disease, is not the Antichrist. It was certainly brought about and used as a tool to bring you to a place where you begin to fear God. Oh, come on, Pastor. Oh, yeah. we. I know we have to take precautions, but we have confused what we do. And we're right in the spirit of Antichrist. <gasps> oh, what? I won't take the mark. The needle in your arm was not the mark. Antichrist will get to your brain before it ever gets... It's already working on the church. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe in wisdom. But I believed in that wisdom before COVID was even a word. Like I couldn't understand why people snotting, as they say down south, coughing, would come to the house of God. Or I have chicken pox, so I'll bring my child and let him sit among them all and give him all chicken pox. I wish it was true that when you're in the house of God and you're praying, the germs are held up and only remain in the one who brought them. Maybe we have not reached that high place of anointing yet. But I remember one time when there was 17 people sitting in the balcony all with chicken pox. I don't mean to throw him under the bus, but <laughs> Reverend Kalinsky decided he was going to go up and heal them all. <laughs> and he did, because all those chicken pox jumped on him. They got delivered, and he had chicken pox. I remember buying him a get well card that offended him amazingly. <laughs> it had the cutest, did you ever, no, you didn't keep that card, you burnt it. Um, <laughs> it had the cutest little um, elephant on it and a giraffe and one other animal and I gave them all red chicken pox. <laughs> he learned a valuable lesson though. Don't lay your hand on the chicken pox colony. Oh, how cute he was with all those little red spots. Does that make him a bad person? No. He had compassion. 
But man, did he have compassion after he itched and those oatmeal baths didn't just quite get it. We're running in a wrong direction and we're all trying to figure out where and how is that mark going to come. We can already see that the moneyless system is pretty much in place. They're going to bear with some of us for a while and then they're going to make it mandatory. Just like I find myself saying, what would my mom do if she came here? Because she doesn't have an email, she doesn't have internet, it's not connected to her phone. And they said she would have to bring someone with her that had it. I remember my mom getting so upset when the store decided to cause you to have to go in and get coupons through your phone. Now, for me to get that $8 off your turkey, you got to go in and become a part of something else. I said, why? I already am a part. Why didn't you just make me a part of this? No, you have to go in and they'll give you coupons. I'm like, when did coupons come in? I thought if I put my phone number in, you automatically took stuff off. Everybody wants your email. It's all a part of working towards the end time. But church, I'm here to tell you, the only thing that is going to keep you from the spirit of Antichrist is to go to the spirit of God. Because I have found so many times in the word of God that what I thought was not what God thought. And I did not find out those things until I gave him time to do what he knew he needed to do. Just had a family that called this week, greatest call in the grocery store. I could take that one because I could hold it under my ear and still be pulling stuff off the shelf. God turned something around that the world said would never happen. But it happened. But it happened. This Antichrist is working on all of us. And it's going to come full scale. And church, if you can have a weekend that causes you to come to the house of God because it's what it is and a whole bunch never came this morning, how will you escape that day? I wish that I could preach to you this morning just about the love of God, but our love for God is beginning to dwindle away and we find ourselves less and less loving him, but more and more on the times. Will our life ever get back to what it was? In 2019? No, it won't. I know for the rest of my life, I will have to wear a mask in to see my dentist. And to go to my bank, you'll have to put a mask on. It's required. I was there when a woman didn't have one on, and they kicked her out. They refused to serve her. 
She said, I'm going to get a new bank. They didn't care because we're all still going there. Following me? And we spend our time, shouldn't wear a mask, should wear a mask. I don't like you because you're having me wear a mask. I don't like you because you put the church in different places. I don't like the cedars. Uh, we've all survived, haven't we? It's, it's funny how when COVID came, um, everyone just sat where the cedars put them. And we did it for your safety. We may have to do it again. I don't know. Hope not, but we'll come to church. Ridiculed because you closed the church. I miss the church. But I'm happy to say today, and I'm believing when I say this, we're going to keep this trend. No one in this church has got that disease from coming to the house of the Lord. Nobody. But we have got it traveling, we've got it visiting, we've got it past family to family, we've gone to the store and got it, we've got it from the doctor's offices. You following me? The Antichrist is already working on the church's mind. When I read about these countries where men of God are going in and people are finding places in the woods and they're finding buildings and they're sneaking into them at night so that they can hear the word of God and we live here in this country and we are allowing fear to control us. Why aren't I coming to church? I don't know. I just can't. I'm telling you this morning, the Antichrist is already working on your mind. If we get to that place that the foreign countries are in, will you make your way to a hiding place to hear the word of God? I remember when I was youth pastor, um, I don't think I can say that I didn't have common sense. Um, it was quite an experience. I took our girls on a camping trip. I didn't tell their leaders what we were going to do. I went around to the oldest group. Um, some of you are sitting here this morning that participated in that. And we, everyone, including myself, had to sneak out of the camp once we all went to bed for a secret meeting. And we always would take two men with us so that we were protected, had someone who could stand up for us if anything happened. And I filled them in on this secret meeting, and they brought fake rifles. And they were guards, and we were in a prison camp in another country. I told the girls, you need to memorize some scriptures to bring. Bring a piece out of your Bible because they've taken all of our Bibles away. The only thing you have is maybe one little piece. Or your memory. What is in your heart. Some of the girls never made it out of their tents. Their leaders caught them. They couldn't make the meeting. Those of us that did made it over to a wooded area, had to go there in the dark. We had to lay on the ground. And when the guards would come, I would say to everyone, put your head down. The grass was wet. 
is cold. And we begin to bring scriptures from our heart. In that dark place because of our love for Jesus. All of a sudden we heard the sound of one of the guards voices yelling saying I believe I see movement over there in the woods and they started to head towards us. I proceeded to tell the girls how much I loved them what they meant to me. And I said, I'm going to get up and I'm going to run in that direction. And when I do, I want you to begin to run towards the camp and get back into your beds. One of the girls said, no, Sister Ellie, I'll go. We need you. And I begin to tell them, you have it hid in your heart. And if I'm caught, you carry on because God has put it in you just like he's put it in me. And I begin to run and they begin to run. That night, some of us soiled ourselves I remember running and the guards grabbing a hold of me. One of them was my oldest brother. And he finally had to shake me with fervency and said, Ellie, it's only a game. I wept, I cried. But it's not a game. becoming a reality can I afford to take advantage of the house of God can I afford to come in and decide I'm not going to praise him today no you cannot can I afford to put him on the shelf because I just got too many things to do no we cannot the antichrist spirit is out there church and it wants to devour the church if it can get the church it will have won over your life we have to come to a determining place that i am not going to let this antichrist take me over It is that spirit of Antichrist. And we've heard about it. And yet, it works in our homes. We don't know the spirit. We allow all kinds of things as someone preached. We've allowed it to be right in our house. Things that we would have removed, I believe it was Reverend Bosco. We now let it live in our homes. We just had an issue in our home over this holiday season. Another thing, we found out when that rain happened, it came into an area that we don't normally look at. And so mold began to grow. I want to ask you, church, what mold is growing in your homes that you don't even know is there, but it's in the corners, it's in the closet, until it will take you over? And what did they tell us? They said, don't take anything out of the closet. Leave it there and bomb it. 
It'll come tomorrow. Bomb it. Because once you touch it, once you bring it in, all of those mold cells begin to go into your atmosphere. There is a spirit out there today. And we live in a world where we want to give our children all of the things that we didn't have. You turned out pretty darn good with your parents that tortured you, who said you can't watch that. And we went to school not knowing what all the kids were talking about. So now we have come to a place where we let our children know all of these things. And as a pastor, it just burdens and hurts my heart when I sit among the kids and they can sing all the worldly songs when they used to sing Christian ones. You know why? Because I remember the day that I wasn't sure I really wanted to serve Jesus. And I wanted to know all the worldly songs. So I found a place to hide away so I could learn them. And what did they bring me? Almost to a place of destroying my life. I want to encourage every parent today. I want to encourage every leader today. I want to encourage every person in this church that doesn't even have children because when we dedicate them, we say I will stand and I will be a hedge about them to protect them, watch over them. We've got to start opening up our mouths. We've got to start bringing truth. We've got to bring in the spirit of Jesus Christ, not allow the spirit of the Antichrist to overtake our homes. Our children live with such noise. Beep, 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 beep. Ah, yeah, ah, wah. TV's going, computers going, everything going, stimulating their mind in a spirit of antichrist. Whoa. What? will bring the Antichrist to my life when I serve that spirit more than I serve God. I'm talking to every priest this morning. I'm talking to every woman in Zion this morning. We have got to make more time for our children. We've got to make more time in our lives so that we can win the lost at this time. But even more than that, so we will make heaven our home. That's our responsibility. That's what God has called us to. You can't even go into a restaurant and enjoy a meal without the music overtaking you. It's got louder. It's got more annoying. It squeals. It screeches. But if you try to sit down and talk, sit down and talk to your young people about the call of God that they feel is on their lives. Dig a little deeper than, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll be a Sunday school teacher. Begin to ask them why. But then ask them what they want to be in life and they have no problem telling you at all. And what they're going to do with their natural life is only going to help supply them for what is here on this earth. The Bible says if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. 
That's what it says. And yet, for all of that, there's something greater, and that's the call of God. The call of God is there, whether I retire or I don't. Retirement is from this world's labor. It gives you a chance to sleep in till nine instead of getting up at four. How's that sound, Ricky Brusso? Your days are numbered for a nine o'clock wake up call. It's not to retire from God. How do you retire from God? You had a job before he showed up. You had a reason why you asked him to come into your heart. This week, will you do something for me? And, and I don't even want to do this. <laughs> Just being honest. Because I know I'm going to be found in the place of wanting. Will you take and look at your day and write down out of 24 hours, this, this is sad, but this will be the easiest way for you to do it. Write down how much quality time you had with God. And then times 24 by 7 and see how you make out. And then ask yourself this question, is this enough? I liked what Brother Ben said. He said, you're better off to eat a hamburger than to just go hungry but never spend any quality time with God. God is calling the church back to his spirit, not the spirit of Antichrist. I'm not going to get all done today, so I'm going to try to end at a good place to come back. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, there's... Something that I want to pull out of here that I want you to see. Because God didn't say, ye are of God, adult children. He said, little children. The problem with us as adults is we get used of controlling environments. Is that not true? In your home, you decide if you're going to buy something, not buy something. You decide if you're going to go on vacation, not vacation. You decide where you're going to go on vacation. You decide where you don't want to go on vacation. If you want to go out at 11 o'clock at night, you can go out at 11 o'clock at night. You make the plans for this natural life. But in God, we must stay little children. And we must always accept him as our father, the guide. Our problem is we begin to control God's answer to us. And because we have control, because we can do what we want to do, if your child walked out and said, I'm going out and it's 11 o'clock at night, what are you as a parent going to say? You ain't going nowhere. But when you become an adult. I grew up in a home, 11 o'clock was curfew. You better be in the door. 29 years I lived in that curfew. It never changed. When I got married, and to this day, 33 years later, 
when 11 o'clock rolls around, I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to get home. When I first got married, some nights we were actually out past 11, and I would look at the clock in the car, and my heart would like go, <gasps> and I couldn't breathe. And I remembered I got to go home and face my dad. And then I would remember, no, I have to face Jerry, and he's out with me past 11. I think that's why I have such a phobia when we travel and he's very kind. He, he got me eventually. But he would say, let's just go and we'll drive and when we get tired, we'll find a place. <laughs> that's, that's making me hyperventilate right now. And maybe that's the way you can roll, but as I watch that clock get closer to 11, I have to know where I'm spending the night, and I've got to be in it. You following me? Church, we have got to know where we are in the household of the Father. And no matter how old I get, he still says, my little child, you got to follow me. You got to walk with me. You got to pray before your decisions. You got to know that you are in the will of God and you're walking where you should be. And my spirit is with you always. Because if it's not, it's the spirit of Antichrist. I hear people so many times saying, when it comes, I will not accept it. I got news for you. It's here. And when we deny Jesus Christ, we are accepting it. It's taken over our minds. It wants us to live in a lawless generation. So therefore, if the word of God tells you you shouldn't do something, that is the Antichrist. That's an occult. <laughs> Following me? But there's laws in this book that must be followed. Lest he come and catch you unawares. Oh, love of God, how rich, how pure, how measureless, how strong it shall forevermore endure. It's got to be the saint's song. We are living in a day where this, this spirit of this world is going to begin to just blow our minds. And I must come back to a God that says, hang on, hold fast. He never promised me a rose garden when I found him as my savior. But he did tell me, I'll heal you from the thorns. <laughs> they may have put a crown of thorns upon his head. They may have tried to destroy him, church. But they couldn't. They may have left the scars. I'm sure when we see him, we will see the scars on his forehead where they pounded it in. A scar... I didn't cut my hand off because I have a scar from putting my hand in a glass and it got cut and I had to go to the emergency room and they had to stitch it up. It's a reminder, don't do that stupid thing again. 
The scar doesn't hurt me today. The scar is a reminder. The scars that Jesus went through, it didn't hurt him today. It hurt him then. It hurt his will. But he would not give up because he loved you first. And because he loved you first, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, you're able to love him. Without his love of you first, he knew this was going to come. And we keep saying, why didn't he do so? He did. He did. God gave his son for us to receive, for us to walk in for us to uphold, for us to keep. He gave us a spirit of righteousness, of godliness that he is so that we too could walk in the spirit of truth. How is our world getting to the place it is? I hear people, what is wrong? How is it here? Read your Bible. Pray every day and you'll have understanding. It's called the end time. It's called the Antichrist taking over. It's called the day that evil will be treated as good and good will be treated as evil. We're in this last day. Will your vessels be full of the Spirit of God or will you come trying to get something from someone else who prayed through? They're not going to have enough to give you because it's my responsibility. It's your responsibility. It's a day that when we find ourselves in a place, do a quick communication with God about your life and then say God I'm going to look for why you put me here just like Job did we all talk about Job when we run into a problem don't we oh God Job got out of it you know how he never took on the spirit of defeat which is what the antichrist is Hear me? We don't ever go into his victory. We just all love being Job. Oh my God, I think I even got a boil. You following me, church? I'm going to look at Noah's family. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace. And in the grace that was bestowed upon Noah, he was able to bring that grace to his children and to his children's wives. But their families never made it on the ark. Families today, will your children make it in the resurrection of Jesus Christ because he looked down and found favor in you? You can go to another church this morning. You can watch it on TV. But be careful. Make sure it's a church that's preaching like I am to you this morning. Because that's the message Noah preached and that's the message Moses preached. You hear me? We don't have time to be a Jonah being swallowed up in a big fish to sit around because we're bitter, because we're angry. Next week I'll talk to you more about that love. And actually, next week I won't. I'll be with Sunday school next week. 
unless God really talks to me, and I'd even be willing to give that up, and that's one of my favorite times during the year, is being with them. We have to get rid of the spirit of Antichrist. I want you to write down the things that you did and were you able to sit there and worship God in them? The conversations that you had, are you able to find Jesus in them? Are you able to find forgiveness? Are, are you able? I, I'm telling you, the, the battle that I went through, through COVID, brought such anger to me and frustration to me and insecurities to me, and I had to battle them all. And I'd love to tell you that I passed every test, but I've had to go and apologize a few times and probably still will. Because I don't want the church to be lost. In your condemning, will he be there? No. In your frustrations, will he be there? No. He will be there, but he's going to be waiting for you to decide to come to him because he cannot be the author of confusion. And that's what the spirit of Antichrist is. And while you're on all these sites trying to figure out what it is all about, you're entering into a word called confusion. And the Bible says confusion is sin. You can't figure it out because it's confusion. But I serve a God that is not confusion. I serve a God that said, I will rise you above it. I serve a God that says, my love is greater than all those things. Will you evaluate this week? Will you take a day and spend it fasting? I thought this morning of having people raise their hands that will do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but God may ask you to do it all five. Not so men can praise you. Not so you can go around saying, I'm fasting. <laughs> I've been fasting for three days. No, shut away with God and nobody knows what you're doing except you and God. Because it's your time. God, I must be saturated with you. God, in his graciousness, thank you, music ministry, this morning because God is desiring and he is longing. He wants his people to come and praise him and worship him. How do you think he feels when he looks down and you've asked him for so many things and he's blessed you with so many things? I think one of the saddest things is for children to get to an age where they begin to hate their parents who raised them, gave them a home, fed them, and now they don't think that that's enough. And I hate to tell you, but some of your children are there right now in a spirit of antichrist, and we must get the Holy Ghost in them, and we must get them water baptized, and we must make sure that their calling is sure. And I'm going to tell you something. When they were little, you dedicated them back to God. And you made a covenant with God and a vow with God that when he came, you would make sure they were ready. I don't take dedications lightly. Will they? Ask yourself that question this week. Will my children hear the trumpet sound? It isn't enough, church, for your kids just to live in your home and live off of your salvation. It's our job to raise them in the ways of God so they will not depart. Sit down and watch some of the things your children are watching. My spirit, when I begin to watch it,
grieves me and I have to shut it off. But the families of the church can sing the songs of spiritualism and we think it's cute. We ignore it. Don't let the spirit of Antichrist take away your crown. Don't let the spirit of Antichrist take your families away from heaven and all it holds. People are coming back to God. Because they have found themselves wanting. I talked to three people over this Thanksgiving holiday, encouraging them back into the house of the Lord. <laughs> I'm not bragging, it's my job. It's my job because I dedicated myself to him for the cause, and no matter what. I cannot sit idle. I cannot sit and watch lives go to hell. And I refuse to let the spirit of the Antichrist control me. I sat the other day thinking to myself, I'm not fun anymore. A lot of people have a hard time dealing with me. And I've come here this morning out of love to speak to my church, to my flock. I've come as your shepherd this morning to inspect you because that's what the Bible says a shepherd does. The Antichrist says I'm controlling. The Antichrist says I put too many laws. I'm only following the laws of God. I don't want a worm in your life destroying your brain so that you cannot think. I encourage everyone that is watching me this morning and the enemy is telling you that you cannot come into the house of God. I've even had people say, I don't, I don't know why. I just can't do it. I'm telling you this morning, there's a spirit of antichrist. It works on fear and it's overtaking the church. Arise, akabashakaya. Arise from it today and begin to worship God and begin to fight for God. And he will cause the curse to go over your house. But you've got to put the blood of Jesus Christ on that doorpost. And you've got to get in your homes with your families. And you have got to begin to pray. And you've got to begin to seek God. Cook your meals in aluminum trays. Put paper plates out so that you can clean up quick and spend all that other time with your family in quality, connecting them to this God. Well, they walk out of your homes and walk into those schools. The Antichrist is having full reign unless you rise up a standard against it. I want this church to have children in it that are strong like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king even gave them different names, but they knew who they were inside, and nothing could change that. You won't find them vaping down the street with a bunch of kids. You won't find them sneaking out of your house at night. Are we so busy that we don't even go in to check where they are?
We cannot afford to enter the house of God and not get in his presence. We cannot afford to do that church. Stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop saying, I don't know what it's going to take. Because we know what it's going to take. It's going to take Jesus. <laughs> it's going to take me praying. It's going to take me fervently. Not always having my children like me. Having them not always have fun because the Antichrist wants our children to think they're having fun. It's easy for us to look at these children that we read about in the news. But not all of them have come from what we qualify as the homes that deserve that. There's no home that deserves that. Sin caused that. But I got news for you. Some of these young people come from wealthy, wealthy homes, like the tragedy, and you still read things on the families that cannot get over it, of a young man who wasn't connected to Jesus. Lives snuffed out. Shootings in our town. Manchester Patch keeps sending out warnings. Keep your eyes out on both sides, in front and back. You never know when somebody's going to cross the line and kill you. I can say the other day, the angels protected me, and to this day, I have no idea how in the world the car coming at me at 40 miles an hour, angry because I had to wait in a line for a light, decided to get in my lane with nowhere to go. And I called on the name of Jesus, looked in my, my rear view mirror, and the car was behind me. No room to get over. Cars on this side. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to tell you that my first thoughts after the name of Jesus was, thank you, Jesus, but it came out, what an idiot! <laughs> and then I begin to say, God, I'm sorry. Help him. Send somebody to tell them about Jesus. I'm sorry. Thank you for saving me. Thank you that I'm driving home right now. That's what the spirit of the Antichrist wants to cause us to do. And I must arise. And if I make a mistake and let it try to make its way into me, eventually my whole life will become not looking at the people like Jesus does, but as idiots. I'm glad he didn't look at me as an idiot. I had made a lot of wrong choices.
I'm glad he didn't look at you as an idiot. He looked beyond all of our faults and he's seen our need. And I have since prayed for that lady with children in the back seat, just angry with life. Shut in with God in a secret place. There in the spirit beholding his face. Gaining new power to life's race how I long to be shut in with God this morning in this house at 745 Main Street God showed up to be shut in with us but did you show up to be shut in with him If you're not saved here this morning, if you don't know this Jesus, if you're petrified out of your mind, I want to introduce you to a God that knows all things and does all things well. If you will get out of your seat and just make your way down to these fine ushers, Brother Willie, my friend, Sister Grace. If, if it's your first time and you're like, I, that's an awful long aisle, if you'll just raise up your hand right now, we have ushers all over this auditorium and we have elders that would love to help you find Jesus right where you are. The rest of us, we're going to begin to sing that song again and we're going to find a place to get shut in with God. Shut in with God in a secret place. There in the spirit beholding his face. Gaining new power. To run in life's race, how I long to be shut in with God. Shut in with God in a secret place. The This morning, if you're here and you're struggling, it just seems really, really a battle to like get shut in. Will you just find someone who's really praying, someone who's really worshiping, and just go stand beside them. Just, just go stand beside them. Hallelujah. Just say to them, I'm over here and, and I'm praying with you because I want to get into that place with God. You don't even have to touch him. Just let the presence of God, the cells of his love, the cells of his peace, just let it begin to flow out of your life to reach the lost, 
to reach the dying. Making a claim this morning. I will not, I will not, I will not let the Antichrist spirit dwell in me. But I will let the presence of Almighty God dwell in me, saturate me. Oh, God, saturate me. Fill me. Fill me to overflowing. Fill me to overflowing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If your family is away from God, don't condemn yourself. Get on your knees and begin to pray. He can reach them. He can get them right where they are. The Bible says don't give up. Try again. This time you can make it. All of heaven wants you to win. All of heaven wants your families to win. All of heaven is standing in the gap for you. But we've got to open our mouths. <laughs> we've got to begin to get so on fire that when we get around them, all of those obstacles have to fall away. If we saturate our homes, that presence cannot remain. It has to flee. It has to flee. It has to flee. It cannot remain. It has to flee. In the name of Jesus, it has to flee. It has to flee. It has to flee. We have to stop accepting what the enemy throws at us and raise up a standard against it. Oh, love of God, how rich, how pure, how measureless, how strong. <laughs> that love of God, it shall endure. It shall win. It shall make the difference. Hararararamasataya. The songwriter said, we win, we win, hallelujah, we win. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We win, we win, hallelujah, we win. I read the back of the book and we win, hallelujah, 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 we win. Oh, I read the back of the book and we win. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory to your name. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, masikiri arararabashatai. Oh, ya kama mama mama siti arararabashatai. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, I take these three women in Zion and I believe you to bring this little girl through this battle. Oh! We come against the power of hell. Put her back in that house of God. Let her sing the songs of Zion and preach the word of God in Jesus' name this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just keep praising him. We got a young man finding Jesus. Just keep praising him this morning. Keep praising him. Keep praising him today. Keep praising him. He's my God. He's a victorious God. Praise him today. Can you grab a mic and just keep this altar call going till that young man is done? Hallelujah, Keep Jesus. It going that young man thank you, done. Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Yes, you are gracious, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for reaching us today, Lord God. Thank you for shaking us out of our places, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for allowing your spirit to come in this house, Lord Jesus. God is reaching people, God. It's saving people right now in this auditorium, Lord God. But God, it's going out, God. I believe it's going to families right now, God. God, as I was praising you, Lord God, I could see the families of people who aren't here anymore, God. I could see some of the children, God. And I know their parents are believing that they will be right back here in this house of God. I thank you for that, Lord God. God, because we're going to take on the spirit of Christ, not the spirit of the Antichrist. And we're going to draw our families back. We're going to draw our friends back. We're going to draw co-workers into this house of God. Things are going to change, God. These seats are going to be filled, God. And with people who are willing and desiring to know more from God, to come into this house of God, put the world aside, take away all the confusion, and have the clarity in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, as we praise you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your word today, God. Thank you for making us little children, keeping us little children, Lord God, that we can do more for you, that we can reach people, that we can listen and hear your voice today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, God. We continue to praise you right now, God. We continue to let your spirit, God, reach people in this auditorium, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you're still meeting needs here at this altar. You're meeting needs throughout the auditorium, Lord God. God, you're going to run that spirit of fear out of the households of all those who are watching, who are too afraid to come to the house of God. That is going to be their testimony no more. They will be here in the house of God. Fear will not rule their homes. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will give them the strength, the fortitude to come back to God's house. Hallelujah, Lord God. They will be not ruled by rumor. They will not be ruled by opinion. They will not be ruled by politic. They will be ruled by the Spirit of God that's going to come into their households and change their lives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your spirit, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for coming into this house today. God, we just thank you for the praises of your people that we hear all over. God, we just thank you because you're strengthening us, God. You're getting us ready, Lord God. You haven't abandoned us, God. You've always been there with us, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for the doors being open, God. Thank you, Jesus, for being able to come into the household of faith, God. Not in fear, but in, in expectation, God. And we just thank you, God. Thank you for this morning, God. Thank you for reaching us, God. Thank you for all that you've done, sharing your love, and thank you for loving us first, God. Jesus' name, hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for every soul here, Lord God. Thank you for those who you're going to be bringing in, Lord Jesus. Thank you for those you're calling back, God. So many things to be grateful for today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for our shepherd, Lord God. Thank you for her listening to God's word and sharing it with us, God. Even though it may hurt, but it's going to benefit us so much in the long run. We just thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you feel his peace today? Can you feel his strength in you again? Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. I just feel his presence just settling in this auditorium, and not just to make us feel good, but to strengthen us. I mean, I feel strong right now in his spirit. I feel it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That means we have a job to do. That means we have something to look forward to when we leave this house. It's not just so we can just go out and just say, oh, we just had a great service, but we have strength now to go do these things. And some of these things that you think of like, how am I going to get this? How is this going to happen? How the strength of God that you're feeling right now, this presence of God is what's girding you up 
to make these changes, to make this difference in your homes, to make this difference in your lives, to change what happens when you go to work tomorrow, to change what happens the next time you run into your family, to change what happens in the grocery store. Oh, hallelujah. It's going to be an incredible testimony that's coming out, Pastor. Incredible. I just feel it. I feel it. I just feel it right now. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Making a way where there is no way. Hallelujah. You can't see it. I can't tell how it's going to change, but it's, he's changing it. He's already doing it right now. How many believe that today? Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus, please remember tonight when you come, you know, we have the men and the ladies meetings and that's really going to continue to strengthen us and I'm just looking forward to tonight, you know, just being with our brothers and our sisters here, just gathered together and gaining strength, but to, not just for ourselves, we're not a club here, we're not a social club. The church has power, the church has the ability to change things and things are going to change. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate it. Thank you. In Jesus' name. <laughs> We're not a club, but we are social. Yes, praise God. So please come back for the uh, men's and the ladies' meetings tonight. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.